Just trying to show how much uh, actual uh, crankshaft joint uh, play I've got uh, on this uh, Bridge 327 here, which I think led to the uh, demise of the uh, uh, crankshaft gear off of uh, number uh, three cylinder there. Uh, anyway, here I'll just try to show this. It's difficult to uh, to do here. I've got a piece of paper in there, and I'll just uh, now the front crankshaft isn't turning. So if you can see that movement there, I'll try to zoom in a little more. So from what I'm seeing, that's over an eighth inch of movement at the. Uh, counterweight there. Time you get out to the counterweight radius I got more than an eighth inch of movement. And that's that's just the crankshaft joint. The front uh, front cylinder has a uh, piston in it so it's not it's not rocking any there. So when you have that much and the joint between uh, two and three has uh, slightly less but uh, when you when you add that up you know, it's going back and forth like this, so uh, the gear there uh, didn't like that, obviously. So uh, I'm going to try to uh, tighten this joint up. Uh, um, we'll show you the results of that. Hopefully I can uh, do that and get this engine running so you can actually hear what the exhaust noise sounds like. Not the crankshaft slamming around like that. Here you can see the actual uh, wear surface for the crankshaft joint. Um, I got a uh, piece uh, milled or drilled out in the center there uh, just so it made it easier for me to uh, file down each side of the joint and uh, not having to uh, remove so much metal going uh, completely across it. But anyway, uh, what we're looking at here, right here, is uh, where the uh, joint from number two cylinder has worn into the crankshaft on uh, number one cylinder. You got you got some wear here too, but uh, this is the main one there. It looks like it's showing up pretty good right there. So I don't know how many thousandths of an inch uh, it pounded its way into that crankshaft, but uh, a bit. I got it covered up here just to uh, hide some of the secrets of my crankshaft joint design anyway. So. I'm giving quite a bit away here, but uh, this one um, hasn't worked out very well. So uh, you know, I thought I would uh, share what I the problems I'm having with it here. Uh, the uh, joints on the two-cylinder stacker are completely different than this, and uh, they were made a lot more precise and uh, other things, and completely different design, anyways. And they they work fine. I didn't do that on this because I didn't have the machining uh, access. But uh, so this one was, you know, an experimental design that's having some issues. So uh, my intention now is to try to uh, braise up these surfaces to tighten up the uh, gap. So hopefully that'll work. So to uh, repair these uh, crankshafts for the Briggs uh, three-cylinder uh, stacker radial there. Um, I decided instead of uh, using JB Weld that uh, I would uh, braise up the, the mating surfaces there on the, the crankshafts and then uh, file them back down or <coughs> machine them if I can get access to a mill uh, back down to the size that they need to be to uh, tighten up the fit. Uh, got quite a bit of uh, bronze on there so I have lots of uh, lots of filing to do but uh, I think uh, bronze will be a better uh, uh, better repair than uh, the JB Weld was just due to uh, compression strength. I was looking at the tensile strength of it of 6,000, but uh, what I really need is uh, compression strength here. So I'm uh, hoping uh, it'll work out better that way. So I've got lots of uh, lots of filing time ahead of me. That's for sure, though. Get these down to the size they need to be.